vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! Hey, I want to do a quick review of uh, Batman uh, Animated Series Season 2. Why Season 2? Well, um, you know, Batman the Animated Series really revolutionized animation. Really revolutionized our take of Batman. In the past ten years before that, we had the comics, especially with, like, Killing Joke, Dark Knight, just and the Tim Burton movies really just really making big hits but the animated series went further and it kind of showed us a Batman that was more of a detective and ex kind of like a little bit easier to swallow for you know l logical not not just for movie tricks you know there there are things about movies that they can get away with you know like how Sherlock Holmes can solve everything just that quickly you know, without really explaining it to the audience. Here we got a real detective. A really easier to understand psyche. And we have sympathy for him, even if it is somewhat of an innocence that he has sometimes. So, let's start. My This is going to be my top 12 episodes of the series. Number 12, Jokerfish. You know, this one is has a very odd animation style. Still, it follows the comic book very, very close. It introduces a few things, if you want to be pretty accurate to it. <coughs> but, um... What's good about it is, um... It shows Joker more of a bully. Unlike, um... Uh, other takes where he's like the the whimsical clown, but it still it makes sense to have him as a bully to explain how he works with his henchmen or how he can get out to where he is. And this is a really funny episode. Definitely, I love the theme song, the Joker Fish theme song that runs on the TV. Sing it often. Okay, episode 11. If you're so smart, why aren't you rich? The episode that introduces is Riddler. Before then, we had uh, Frank Gorshin's Riddler, which was, and the Jim Carrey movie was around about this time. So we got a nice redesign, a nice logical, as a toy manufacturer who kind of has a lot of envy and uh, just easy to like get angry over his own ego. Such a great character. Okay, number ten, uh, Tiger Tiger. This one's more of a monster movie in that like we're talking about classic Bride of Frankenstein. In fact, the main villain is uh, modeled after the the Doctor. And uh, here we get a really nice, sympathetic villain, which is really one of the reasons why everyone loves Batman movies, and, you know, the, the monster is fascinating to watch, while still giving a really great tension as he's chasing after Batman. Number nine. Day of... Uh, this is two episodes, but I'm just cramming it into one. Day of the Samurai and Night of the Samurai. The thing that um, this... Sh series did so well is it brought in a really interesting origin of Batman, and it did it didn't force it down our throats, didn't didn't make it too hard to follow. It made it nice and interesting and pretty much logical. So here we get to see early Batman and the envy nin uh, samurai uh, that was envy of him and becomes a ninja. What's interesting about these episodes is the animation style unlike most of the episodes which have this really really nice Japanese anime look to them and by that um, they had this beautiful movement that was just stunning and that's because of some of the animation companies that they got to work on it and at its worst it looked like kind of like those old Dick Tracy episodes they were pretty poor nice design but still it was hard to follow I mean, later, once they got to using computers in Superman and uh, and uh, Batman Beyond, those poorer episodes looked a lot, lot better. But still, uh, this one has a unique style, and I really, really like it. Now, number eight, Off Balance. What's interesting about this episode is it sets up the uh, sets up a build up to Raz Al Ghul. Just joking. That's the Batman Begins pronunciation, which is just embarrassing, but um, Ra's al Ghul and his daughter and Vertigo. Uh, what's interesting about this is like during the 60s, when Neil Adams and Dennis O'Neill were writing Batman, he was more of an exotic adventurer, kind of like James Bond. Now, uh, here they set up a really logical and a good reason why to have Batman off of Gotham City, as well as bring in 
Talia and the League of Assassins. Now, all of this doesn't seem out of the ordinary. It works really, really well. It, it works like a, as all these episodes should. Which is interesting. I, I don't know. I mean, like, when it kind of sticks out when you look at the back catalog and the Rachel Ghoul issues. But still, this is really, really good. Love the scene where they just pay tribute to that comic using panel for panel exact. Alright, number seven. I am the knight. Now, this one's angsty. Back. Now, uh, it's not an easy to follow episode because the animation style is pretty rough. So, um, what makes it interesting is that um, this is a well-deserved angsty Batman. As much as a lot of people don't like when characters are angsty, this is really well-deserved, and it becomes more canon to at least how we see and understand Batman. It's a good episode. It's not the best animated, but it's really good. Now, another Psyche episode is number six, Perch in, uh, Perchance to Dream which is the episode where Batman, uh, the Mad Hatter, gets Batman stuck in a VR program and he gets his long-lost wish, which is very, very similar to Alan Moore's for the man who, ha uh, what do you get for the man who has everything? I in this episode, we get to see, uh, we get to see Batman's life with, uh, Selina Kyle and his family, just as a normal guy, not as the master detective, martial arts, amazing guy that we all grew up with. What's interesting about it is you do build a lot of sympathy towards Batman, and a lot of that is because of Kevin Conroy's voice acting. There's a lot of emotion in there, there's a lot of... It's really an amazing performance. Okay, now let's go on. Uh, number five, Zatanna. Again, like I was saying before about Origins, um, this one makes sense. It's really, really good. It's The thing about comic books that is difficult is just the heavy amount of text and everything else here. They do it so simple that any simple kid can just follow along with it. You know, it's just, alright, he's a master escape artist. He learns through a magician to learn the best escape artist routines. With that, he meets along Zatanna, and there's a, like a good adventure movie, a nice sense of tension of their romance, you know. And then, as the episode progresses, she's damn sexy really really sexy there's so much sex in this episode it's amazing and but but aside from that the the last act the big fight scene at the end on top of a wing is just amazing just pulse pounding action uh number four everyone's favorite episode uh, harley and ivy what's beautiful about this episode is just how relatable the relationship between harley and ivy are and they are such they're they're every girl out there. Every girl that can somehow are befriend one another through even though they annoy one another. But still they stick together with one another. That's what's beautiful about them. You know, outside of them being so darn beautiful. But again, the Joker comes in and like I said before, he's more of a bully. It's it what it's what makes his character so interesting and very very much more realistic than any other take of the Joker before. Okay, still the and also the animation is top notch in this episode. And Montoya has one of the best scenes ever, and you'll see when you watch the episode. Okay, number three, the man who killed Batman. Again, what's interesting about this episode is it shows the hierarchy of the criminal underworld and how it works out. What um. As Sid the Squid is going under the presumption of being the one who killed Batman, there's many episodes in here that show the point of view of what people think Batman's like and how they perceive him. And again, this episode does it really, really well. Has one of the best animated Joker moments. Now, unlike the other episodes that use Japanese animation, and it looks really stylish here. Push those emotions, and it's just some of those best keyframes you've ever seen in your life. The way how Joker just has that sense of like bile just building up as he's just talking about this guy. It's just so brilliant. And again, it's just one of the best Joker episodes. This is the best take of the Joker we've ever seen ever. Okay, number two, one of my personal favorite, Joker's Reckoning. This is uh, 
basically a, uh, I'm sorry, Robin's Reckoning, <laughs> kind of being out of it. But still, we get to see a little bit more of Robin, and as he's uh, trying to, uh, as he discovers that the man who killed his parents is on the loose. So we get to see a little bit of an origin story of Robin. Now, the origin story is nothing new. It's pretty much by the book standard Robin origin story. But what's really, really great about it is that we get to see Batman just really that sense of kind of like that urge he wants to solve this case, that kind of drive that he has. And it just makes such a gr just a gripping episode, especially when you get to see younger Batman and just that relationship. Now, as the episode progresses to uh, a very typical storyline where Batman tells Robin, I don't want you to do the same thing that I would have done, which is typical in these type of stories where the, the mentor doesn't want his apprentice to kill off the other guy. What's good about it is Kevin Con Conroy's, again, his, his emotions in it and the way they've set up the story, you do see it, it, that emotion is warranted. It's not a cheap throwaway line. It actually means something. That's why this is one of the best stories ever told. I, I think it's better than most of the movies combined. And seeing Robin, seeing how Batman relates with Robin and how much he would actually go to solve that case. You know, I, I think this is better than any of the movies. All right. Well, that's me. Okay, number one. Everyone's favorite episode. Almost got it. You know, um... I, I don't know what else to say about this episode. This is everything that's great about the show. Um, f four criminals explaining their best stories about Batman. But at, what's really underrated about this episode is a bit of a spoiler, but um, Killer Croc is actually Batman throughout that story. And when he tells his story, it's so terrible, but it's so brilliant because Batman's method acting actually convinces all the criminals that he is Killer Croc. With just that simple line, I threw a rock at him. You know, there's something really just brilliant about it. It's just silly, stupid, but it's the best. Alright, well, those are my favorite episodes from that season box set. I do recommend buying all of them. They are hands down best Batman stories ever told, and looking at it 20 years later, I don't see anybody topping this, you know, it's, there's improvements in animation, there's improvement in style, but these are the best stories ever told, go get it, I'll probably make another one for the other DVDs.